All right. So welcome to the Women Veterans Alliance Wednesday webinar series, even though it's Thursday, but it is our Wednesday webinar series. I'm Melissa Washington. I'm the Navy veteran and I'm the CEO and founder of Women Veterans Alliance. And um, as you all, hopefully all you saw the reminder email that went out about our um, piling in a new app. Um, so if you do have your phone, you can pull the app up on your phone. And they're just gonna be just some questions, um, different topics that we're gonna be asking. Um, and you can give us a thumbs up regarding those. And so the first one, so if you do have your phone and the app, are you familiar with Women Veterans Alliance? Are you a member? Let us know, thumbs up. We are a nationwide organization um, with our primary focus is to connect women veterans with each other and women veterans with resources. And that's what we are here to do today is to connect you um, with a fabulous presentation um, that is going to take place in about a minute or so. So again, look at your app. If you're coming to the UnConference 2021, October 8th through the 10th in Las Vegas, this is our sixth one. This is our annual event that we have. One to let all of you know that early bird pricing does end May 31st. So get registered, get your hotel room, and you can go to womenveteransunconference.com. It's gonna be a fabulous weekend for all of you to restore your soul. So coming up in April, and as you see, we're kicking off April with our webinar today. Uh, we do have one next week. Phyllis Miller is gonna be doing the Veterans Art Venue. Then we have April 21st, where we've got cybersecurity for everyone, which is such so key and important. And then on the 28th, we have entrepreneurship. Life begins with a yes. So I think we've got a little bit of something for um, everyone. And you can just sign up the same way that you did um, through our webinars um, page on our, on our website. And we're going to start putting out May's webinars as well. If you're not connected with us, please do so on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, LinkedIn, and on YouTube. We are on all of those sites. So like us, connect with us, subscribe, and all those other fun things. So let's get into introducing our fantastic presenter who has a plethora of information when it comes to the nuts and bolts of state and federal business certifications. I know it's gonna be a lot of information, um, so we are recording it, so you can always go back and, and watch it. Um, but you know, if you've got paper, pen, make sure you're re ready to take some notes. Um, but I, I wanted to introduce Martha. I've known her for several years, and I want to give you her bio. She is the president CEO of Agile Construction Inc. She holds a Master of Leadership from University of Southern California, which is USC, and has held many senior executive positions in both the private and public sectors. She has over 22 years of military services, excuse me, service, several overseas tours with one year combat tour in Afghanistan in 2004. She has a gubernatorial appointee with the California Veterans Affairs Department Secretary of Minority Veterans charged with advocacy, outreach policy and program development. She served as a chief of staff for the California State Military Reserve, responsibility for emergency operations, fiscal oversight, training and personnel management. And she served three years, Director of State Personnel, California Military Department, Military Department, responsible for all aspects of human resources to include creating and publishing new, policy, new policies and regulations for the modern era. She has a passion for serving our veteran and underrepresented communities. And in 2018 was awarded Veteran of the Year by Disabled American Veterans California Chapter. Woo, that was a lot. All right. So without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing my screen. And Martha, I'm gonna give, go ahead and just share your screen and it's it's all it's all you. All right. And just unmute. Hold on. Martha, if you can just unmute so we can hear you.
hold on, unless we have a little difficulty here. Can you hear me? Yay, yes, we can hear you. Oh, good gosh. All right, and share my screen. Here I am. All right. Whew. We're, we're in, you're in business. I know, so thank you everybody for being here and I do appreciate your flexibility and changing your schedule in order to hear a little bit about federal the federal certification process. And the first thing I wanna say is congratulations because you have decided to um, make that journey to become a business owner, right? So I wanna go on to entrepreneur. What was extremely um, frightening to me was this portion of it where, and that's the second, um, Part of that sentence that says taking a greater than normal financial risk in order to run a business right that's what an entrepreneur does and so um when when i started to, to go down the road of wanting to uh, open up this business i also started looking at how do i mitigate some of the risk involved with this how do i make it less financially risky right so I started looking at government contracting. And why, why do government contracting? Well, first of all, they do 400 billion worth of goods and servicing contracting a year, 400 billion. And they have a goal of 23% for small businesses, all right? And within that goal, there is the subcategories of woman-owned, their goal is 5% small disadvantaged business, um, service disabled veterans and small hub zone. So what, what does that mean and what do I do? Not only can I bid on big contracts for this, but the, oop, it's always the technology that gets us, but the government also does this great thing where they do these set aside contracts. So set asides means that potentially you don't even have to compete for the contract. So what they look at is how big is the contract as far as money, the dollars associated with it, and how many businesses out there can um, actually compete for um, contract. And so this is what you see here. Um, from 3,500 to 150,000, they don't have to put it out to bid. This is the, on the federal side. On the state side, it's 5,000 and under. So if you are providing a widget, a type of service that this agency needs, and the contracting officer knows that you have this widget, they can reach out to you directly and contract. So great opportunity, right, um, for you to go out there and, you know, get a piece of that pie. Um, for 700 or more, you're looking at um, people with like certifications. So I can't stress enough, there are not that many people with these certifications and I personally believe it's because the process is so intensive. But what you're looking at is, um, you know, under 14,000 for the service disabled veteran owned service, um, businesses. And you think about that nationwide. And then within that 14,000, how many are in the same arena offering what you do? So we do construction, construction management, and I'll be using myself as an example. Um, probably likely half of those people at best are doing construction. So I'm only competing with under 7,000 people. And within that 7,000, how many are pipelined into only electrical, only um, road work and such? 
So the certifications, I, I like this, um, this graphic because um, I think we can relate. When we're doing road marches, we have that huge um, ruck on our back and uh, most of us can't take that hill on the first day. We got to train and get prepared. So I truly, I think um, we can really look at this as um, taking that hill. So the 8A business development, 51% owned and controlled by a US citizen who is socially and economically disadvantaged. And this is the terminology used um, traditionally in the government for minority owned business. Um, have a personal net worth of 750,000 or less, adjusted gross income of 350,000 or less, and assets of 6 million or, or less. And you might think, well, if I had all that money, why would I need certification, right? But um, when you look at 750,000 for your personal um, net worth, you're looking also at your home. And so this process is very um, detailed. And I can't, I can't tell you when you're looking at your home and you're uploading information, make sure that when you're looking at the home, if your home is worth 600,000, but you owe 500,000, then that, that asset is basically 100,000, right? So pay attention um, and, and we'll go over all of those things, but make sure you pay attention to that. Demonstrate um, good character and potential. And then uh, you can read the rest. The SAMS um, award management is basically the federal registry for all businesses. So you upload your information and as you get certifications, you upload those. And when contractors, contracting officers are looking for someone within your specifications, they go into the SAMS management um, website and, and basically sort by, by what they're looking for. And this is, a so the Mentor Protege program a, a whole animal onto itself. But what's important to, for you to know about this is as of November of this year, all the other certifications are also eligible for the Metro Protege program. And what this means is you have access to much larger contracts when you pair with a big con company. So let's say, so as a company myself, my bonding capacity in construction is 750,000. And as the prime, I need to do 15% of all contracts that are awarded to me. But if I pair a joint venture with a large company that has a bonding capacity to do a $3 million contract, then we can do that. And then I only have to do 40% of the 15% which potentially could mean one foreman, one project manager, and then the oversight. So that could be three people on my payroll. And one of those is me, right? To do a $3 million contract because everything else is subcontracted or the other company's um, responsibility. So that's, that's kind of awesome um, for us to take advantage of. Hub zone. So this program is developed in order to bring industry and jobs to some struggling neighborhoods and such. And uh, what you can do is you can go on this website, put up the zip code and a map will pop up with all of the neighborhoods that are considered hub zone. And you would be surprised at what some of those are. And then you must have 35% of your employees live in that hub zone. So potentially, if you have a home office and you live in one of these designated um, neighborhoods, then you have 100% of your employees in a hub zone, right? And what you see above 10% price valuation preference, this means if there is a contract that is being bid on and the lowest bid is 100,000 and you bid, let's say, 109,999 you will get that contract because of this program. 
So it is intended to really give opportunity and to bring industry and prosperity into these neighborhoods. You get three years of being able to work under this certification. Oh, doggone it. Well, woman owned small business. So again, ownership 51%. And then what you look at the bottom, economically disadvantaged, um, once again, they're looking at some um, financial constraints, 750,000, 350,000 or less um, for um, three years before certification. So I am telling you, uh, this certification you can keep for always. So once you're certified, you get recertified, um, every other year, but it's yours once you um, attain it. Veteran owned business. So this is um, very important because um, according to surveys, 70% of Americans want to do business with veteran owned businesses. And so you have to own it, right? You've earned it, you've worn the uniform, own it, say it because people trust you. And this is a great advantage um, from the general population. So, so do it, it's um, to bring visibility who those, for those that have served. And different from the other certifications, the VA grants this certification. So, um, so the VA, you will log on to the VA and the links are annotated on there. Um, for service disabled veteran owned business, um, you know, you, you will have to have your disability, but because it's the VA, you don't have to upload anything. All right. You, um, it, it's already linked. So your years of service, it, it validates all that information on there. And I wanted to talk about the DBBE because this, that's the state the California state um, certification, you have to be 10% or more cert, um, disabled um, service connected disability in order to qualify for this um, certification. And both of these certifications or all three, really they're not contingent on, there's no parameters to finances. It's all contingent on your service. All right, so how do I jump in, right? What do I do to get my certifications? Uh, know that for all of these certifications, 90% of the paperwork required is the same, all right? There's some little nuances to each one of them, but there are 90%, uh, I would say, are the same. You have to have all the same paperwork. Unfortunately, you have to go to a different site to get each of these different certifications. And that's a little bit of a pain, but um, definitely worth it. So you keep hearing, you have to be 51% owner. Um, this also means and in control. So unless you're a sole proprietor, and that's fairly easy, right? A sole proprietor, you are the only person that owns it. Um, Otherwise, you are going to have to show stock certificates, right? You will upload who is the majority owner of the stock certificates. That's what annotates ownership into a corporation. You're gonna provide stock ledgers, incorporation paperwork and bylaws, the board of directors and the minutes. So an important thing to note here when you, so you might think, okay, I'm going to go into business. I want to do a corporation because that mitigates a little bit of risk, right? Um, the corporation, it's an entity onto itself. So you ask, you know, maybe your, your best friend, your husband and somebody else to sit as a board of director. 
make sure you understand and you let them know if they become owners of your company, they will have to submit their tax returns and answer some pretty um, invasive questions as far as um, personal assets and such um, along with you. So um, they could be board of directors and not own any part of your company, but if you issue out stock, they're gonna have to um, provide their tax returns. And so the second part of it, uh, highest position in the business and the managerial expertise to run the business. So let's jump back right now to the bylaws. Should, so you should be the board of director. So you should be the president. Uh, if you have somewhere in either your bylaws or your minutes, you want to ensure that you annotate that you, the owner of this company has veto and override um, ability, that there cannot be a quorum. That means nothing can be voted on without your presence and that you have day-to-day -day management of your company um, through, through this um, annotation. The next portion, highest position in the business, CEO, owner, president, you're gonna have to provide your resume. You, I'm telling you, you've got, you've got this. You just need to ensure that your resume really speaks to your capabilities and what you're bringing to the table. So don't think, okay, well, I was a combat medic for all these years and now I wanna do procurement. I wanna provide this widget to the government um, and my resume doesn't support this position. Well, it does, you know, with, I'm, I'm telling you, you, you've got this. First of all, you as a combat medic, you had to, you know, keep an inventory. Yeah. You know, you had to for all of these items. You had to, you know, order and schedule for all of those items. So don't sell yourself short on any of your capabilities. Talk this out with somebody that understands how to build a resume and ensure that it, it very accurately represents and supports the position that you, that you are holding in the company. And understand this, um, Elon Musk, right? He owns Tesla. I'm pretty sure that guy doesn't even know how to rotate tires, but he doesn't have to. He doesn't have to know how a carburetor works. He's a businessman, right? So you know how to take care of business. Do not sell yourself short um, on this. And you've been in charge of people. The military has made sure that you've been in charge of people. Put that in your resume. Full-time management. So I'm using myself as an example. Uh, this process is crazy, um, crazy accurate and invasive at moments. So they actually Googled me and looked at my LinkedIn um, profile to ensure that it matched what I was saying and what I was trying to get certified on. And what they found out is that I also hold a, um, a real estate license. And I had to provide a, um, a letter of justification, basically speaking to, hey, uh, when I do real estate, it is usually on the weekends. It's limited to no more than three active clients at any one time. And I was good to go. So if you have a full-time job and you are trying to start your business or you are working towards a business, you have a part-time job, that's all good. You just have to be able to articulate how you're able to provide the, the management of your company, okay? And so it's, like I said, it is, it is not, um, 
I don't, I don't believe that any of these certifications are, are that um, difficult. It just takes a lot of time to get them done. And when you're talking about your resume, I just want to say, you know, as women veterans, sometimes we don't own and we're not, we don't, yeah, we, we just somehow devalue our own service. Don't do it. We've all hung on that, on that net and we all survived it. So don't let any, any of this scare you. It's just a different challenge. All right. The financial aspect of it. You're going to be asked to provide three years of your federal taxes, both for your personal and for your business. All right. If you haven't been in service for, for that long, that's okay. Um, provide what you have. If um, so, for some, like the 8A, you must have been in business for two years prior to applying. They want to look at a track record. The DVBE, you could have just um, started, gotten your business license last week and apply for DVBE. So all of those requirements are just a little bit different. They're gonna request verification of your IRS um, tax identification number. So all, all good. Um, your quarterly contributions and reports. So this is um, basically your balance sheets and what you're providing to the IRS, what you're paying. Um, if you don't have some of this information and you can write down why, then that's all good. If you do not have an accountant, I highly recommend you start looking to get an accountant, a good accountant. And you know, QuickBooks is a great solution in the beginning but definitely look at later because um, every year you provide reports and there are audits. For the DVBE, um, you will have to provide, um, you know, your rating letter. Um, otherwise, you know, for the veteran owned service business, you do not. Then, um, your license, your basically your structure of your business. Are you a corporation? Are you an LLC, uh, a sole proprietor, and all the documentations that go along with it? We talked about the balance sheets, the assets, and the adjusted growth. And remember, if there are more than one owner, you will also have to um, submit their information. Business structure, I just talked about that. Business license. So we do construction. I do the oversight, I am the CEO, but I don't have the contractor's license and that's okay too, right? Um, it is perfectly legit that the owner of the company or the person that runs it does, does not hold all of the technical expertise because the truth of the matter is that's not necessarily our job. Our job is to take the business forward. Your DBA doing business as, um, you'll get that through the Secretary of State and um, your DUNS number. So your DUNS number is basically your social security number for all intents and purposes um, for companies to check that you are in business paying uh, and for the credit rating. So once you have a tax ID number and you're registered in DUNS, you have your business license, you can open up a banking account with that information. And it, it, is, it is under um, the company's name. Certificate of good standing, that is done through your state office and then your bylaws and minutes. So some additional uh, information and documentation you're gonna to have to upload. You're gonna to have to provide a birth certificate or a passport. I, I was a little surprised myself, but you will. So if you don't have a copy of those, you know, uh, this is a good time for you to request one. 
character, outstanding taxes, liens, bankruptcy felonies. So if you have any of these, um, it's, it doesn't, it's not going to um, preclude you from participating in the program. You just basically have to outline what you have done to, um, to rectify um, if you had outstanding taxes, what the repayment plan is, um, and, and you'll be good. So don't let any of this scare you. You're, you're able to, um, to work with them. Additional contributors. So again, anybody else who is in your company as an owner, you'll have to annotate and they will have to provide documentation. Community property state. So this is very interesting. Um, in California, we're a community property state. And so as part of the verification pieces, my spouse, um, so each one has a different form, had to sign off on, the, on his right you know, to the ownership of my company. So I own 51%, my husband owns 25%. But because this is a community property state, uh, if he should petition for 50%, that brings them over. So, you know, we, we had to do all the legal documentation saying that he would not, he would not, he waived his right to that business. Bank account signature card. You will have to have, unless you're a sole proprietor, you will have to have a business um, account banking account, and you will have to provide the signature card. So if you have placed more than yourself on the signature card, which, you know, you don't want to write all the checks all the time, that's perfectly legit. But somewhere on your minutes or the bylaws, you should have annotated how much somebody else has um, the ability to withdraw from the account without your approval. So you can annotate somewhere that they cannot withdraw more than $500, more than $1,000 without your knowledge or prior approval. And this all goes to show that you have, that you are indeed in charge of your company. Capability statement. Uh, if we have, well, I will definitely send that out. This is basically your resume and it's a one page resume with the capabilities of your company. If you are starting a business or you have been in a business um, for any period of time, you should be well rehearsed in case anybody asks you, what do you do? Well, what do I do? We are a general contracting construction management and personal development firm. Our specialty is working with federal and state governments. That's it. You have to be able to annotate that, to speak it and give that resume. And this usually is in the form of a one page that gives all of the pertinent information. And then a business plan. So you can go through this whole process and never have a business plan, okay? But if you ever want to do a joint venture or um, you know, do a business loan, you're gonna to have to have a business plan. And I just highly recommend that you just kind of take that hill and do it. It's, it's, um, it's not as difficult as we ourselves make it out to be once you start putting it in there. But basically what you're looking at, what's my battlefield? Who's in it, and what are the rules of engagement, and um, you know, what are my strategic initiatives? That's that's all basically what your business plan does. It it contains no no magic sauce, no crazy matrixes, unless you want to put them on there. So I know that's a lot of information. Uh, I'm going to tell you, it is absolutely worth it to get your certifications and to get into this playing field because there's not that many of us, all right? And there's not that many of us that look like us 
playing in this field, just like when we were in service. So if you can show that you can do a good job, you're gonna go a long way. All right, I know that's a lot. That's like drinking from a fire hose. Um, do I have some questions out there? I only have two people on there. There are people out there. If anybody wants to put in the chat or if you wanted to unmute yourself, you can do so, whichever you feel most comfortable with. No questions? I do. Hi, sorry. Um, my name is Precious, by the way. Um, my question is in reference to um, the certifications. Um, my husband and I run an electrical contracting business. Mm -hmm. um, he's the licensed electrical contractor. Um, uh, originally, the business was the 51% ownership was with his mother. She relinquished her 51% ownership to myself. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm just trying to figure out um, with the, he already had the, we already had the women owned business certification. Um, is it feasible for me to switch that to, to also get the veteran own certification um, as on top of the other certifications that we have. We are HUB certified. So, um, oh, yeah. and I've, I've done all that paperwork for that. I'm just trying to figure out where my veteran status will fit into this business. Cause my husband does the electrical portion. I do the fire alarm system. Yeah, no, absolutely. So um, you can go on the bed biz. So, mm -hmm. and, and upload and start that. So if you've already done the other ones, you know, you've got a good handle on it. You've already got your documentation in place. So you just start uploading and the, the veteran piece, it was done fairly quickly. Um, within, within 45 days, we had our certification. So you absolutely can. And the more you have, the better, right? Because these businesses would like to check off the blocks. And if you've already got those you know, those other two. Yeah, this is great. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's I'm, a, I'm aware of the process. The hub certification process was by far the most stressful. Um, and I'm in the state of North Carolina. So they asked, they asked North Carolinians for um, a lot of different items. And because I'm I'm the only person on the board that wasn't born here. I had to submit my certified birth certificate and my passport and make a copy of my uh, my VIT my VIT card. And I was like, "This is this is a lot." <laughs> yeah. So um, I I kind of felt like what you said they were getting in my business, mm -hmm. and I wanted to keep my business to myself. But um, with you explaining it the way that you did, I understand now you know, why they ask for so much information because they want to, I guess, they want to certify that you are who you say you are. Right. And, um, and one of the bigger things, there was a time, and this still happens, that many companies take advantage of the certification of some of these smaller companies and um, basically pay the veteran or the woman or um, whatever a small amount to use their certification. And the B, I mean, if you go under the 8A and this, um, and definitely under the VA, you will see where they have the cases of people that have been prosecuted for fraudulently using somebody else's certification. So absolutely, um, it's, it's very, it has a lot of scrutiny because they wanna make sure that those of us that have earned it are indeed being able to utilize it. So thank you, Precious. Thank you. You got some, there's some comments in the chat. So Valerie um, says that the state of Maryland required a business plan for its minority business enterprise certification. Um, so that's interesting. Uh, I know in the state of California, they don't require one for, and, and every, 
every state is different and for each state government is different as opposed to the federal government. So that's why I kind of was like focusing right. a little bit on, on the federal piece, but yeah, it, it becomes, it becomes pretty invasive. So good for you. <laughs> yeah, no, th this was a few years ago, but I, I just mentioned it and I, I just put it in the chat because I know there's people from other states out there who may think, okay, great, I can go, but you know, it, it, it just depends. I mean, like they didn't ask me any questions about it. They didn't go through it with a fine tooth comb, but it was one of the requirements of you must have, you must have, you must have. So, I mean, I, I, honestly, I think it's it's a good thing to have anyhow. I think mm -hmm. people stress out way too much over them. Uh, I remember being in a, a VY, uh, VYs with a woman who had waited a year to start her business because she was still working on the business plan. <laughs> and and I, 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 I just said, boy, just put something on paper and it doesn't have to be perfect and you'll just keep keep updating it, keep changing it. It's, it's not a static document, it's a living document. So um, that would just be my advice to people that it, it just it start, start somewhere. And so you can at least move on. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. And, and um, I wanted to put down there, I'm sorry, Melissa. Oh, did no, actually you're, you're just getting ready. Kim um, just actually mentioned the PTAC. So she, um, go ahead. It's perfect. Yeah. Lead so, as, so if you log on to SBA, SBA has great webinars and you get counselors and they're free and you can actually call them. And um, we have PTAC and PTAC procurement. They're everywhere nationwide. They'll help you with your business um, plan. Um, they'll talk to you about funding. Um, I really like the Ascent um, under the SBA. So I want to go back to that because it's a platform for women and there's actually blogs um, that you can log on to. Um, there, it's, there's a lot of information out there for you to tap into. It's just, you know, um, a lot, <laughs> right? So, and then California Capital, um, I wanted to mention that because they also do training on business development. So each state will have different um, business development and their non-for-profit. Make sure that you look at non-for-profit first. There, like I said, there are a lot of people out there making a lot of money. Um, when we were asked to do an 8A, we paid $4,000, $4,000 for somebody to do. And then once I went through it, I'm like, what the heck? Why did I even pay the 4000 And so we filled out a security clearance in the military. All right. I know we can get this done. Um, it's, it takes time and you can actually lean on people. You, um, I'm putting my, my information on there if you have any questions. Um, but those counselors are great. They, they call you like, you know, if I had a glitch, those people um, reviewing my stuff, gave me a call, hey, um, you know, you need to look at your bylaws for X, Y, Z. So uh, I found that they were very user friendly. People wanted to help you get your certification. Um, the VA, I can't, I can't um, say enough about how wonderful they were about ensuring that the process was easy. And if I had any questions that um, they would answer them. So I, I just put a couple of, re, of um, references there. And then, but this is my big one. You know, the Wh Women's Veterans Alliance has a, um, a directory of women business. We got, we, got a, um, we got to stand together, ladies, and Precious, you know, Valerie, um, my contact information is going to be on there. You know, we need to be able to reach out to one another. When um, when I was looking for an accountant, I was definitely looking for a veteran first. You know, because we understand each other's each other's language, and the truth of the matter is, we can probably speak to each other and not worry about our feelings too much. <laughs> you know, we've kind of uh, lost the last one somewhere around year two or or second week of basic training. So I think there's a comfort when we speak to one another, when we're able to um, just get to the truth, I feel, and ground zero with, with that base that we have shared together. So start, start networking because, um, yeah, I, I want to hear about electrical companies because I might have a need to subcontract 
one day and it's right in your backyard and I can say, hey, I want to go here first. So, you know, let's, let's raise each other up and, um, and definitely lean on each other for information. Um, I have my contact informa information here and um, I love this. I didn't come this far to only come this far. I'm, try I'm trying to, to get up there. <laughs> I'm trying to get to the next level. So, and I hope you are too, um, because you, you climbed steeper mountains in this, ladies. So I wanted to give you my contact information. And um, I talked to Melissa about if you would like to, um, any, not just your business plan, I talked to her about um, looking at your business plan, but if you have any questions about, hey, what should some of my bylaws read or, when this question came up, what did you answer? Or how would you guide me? Or what, would, what recommendation? Absolutely, just let me know. So I wanted to provide that for you. Right. Martha, this, this was fantastic information. Um, and, and thank you for sharing those resources. I, I highly recommend women tap into those resources, SBA, the PTAC. The PTAC was very helpful when I started it. Another one of my other businesses, because um, I knew nothing what Nick's codes done, didn't know any of that stuff, but they were very helpful. Um, so we should utilize that as a resource, use Martha as a resource, use me as a resource. Um, mm -hmm. That way we can get you connected. So um, also, too, if you are using the app, um, we do have um, two other topics that are on there. Uh, great presenter and useful content. So if you can uh, reply on there. And again, if you want to review this again, it will be on YouTube and I will get out the um, the other link, the link for this once we get it uploaded, um, to, excuse me, to YouTube. So good stuff. And, and like Martha said, don't be afraid because I'm telling you, it, it can be very overwhelming putting all that stuff together, but don't wait, you know, just just get it, get it done and tap into other women or others that can help you, that help you do it. There's plenty of opportunity out there for us and there's not enough of us there to, to capture that opportunities. Exactly. Exactly. All right. All right, everyone. Well, enjoy the rest of your day and I hope to see you on some of our upcoming webinars. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, everybody.